I said, God, we haven't been prepared like we need to be prepared. That's why we can't praise him in the midst of our struggles. Hallelujah. But how many is willing to say, God, I'm willing. I'm willing to learn what you want me to learn because I'm a true soldier of God. Come on, let's give him some praise. y'all hear what I'm saying it's so easy to say all the right words but brother when those fiery trials come fiery darts thrown at you then that's when you know what's in you isn't that right that's when you know where you are in God hallelujah if you can say oh no 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 I'm not moved by this Uh, no 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 I'm not moved by this then you know you got something right you remember Paul Paul had been in and out of jail, shipwrecked, twi- left for dead twice, whipped 39, striked two or three times. Uh, I mean, just uh, thrown overboard in the sea, perils in the sea, uh, uh, just dangers everywhere. And, and so one day, Paul was headed for Jerusalem. And boy, the prophets came. Boy, they, one of them, Agabus, and the other day, grabbed the girdle and began to wrap him up and said, Paul, thus saith the Lord, you know. You shall not go in Jerusalem. This is what's going to happen to the man that goes to Jerusalem and so on. More they prophesied. The others start crying. Paul, please, please don't go. Paul does all of, all of a sudden. He said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Well, what y'all mean? You're breaking my heart. I'm not only willing to, to go to Jerusalem, but I'm to die for him. I'm willing to die for him. In other words, my mind is made up. I, I, I don't have any problem in that area. I came, I know that I'm going to suffer persecution if I live for God. I don't care. You can't scare me with that. So leave me alone and let me do what I need to do. But he was prepared mentally. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And, I, and, and as God began to take me through those scriptures, you know what I said? I said, oh God, we're not prepared to meet our enemy. So that's why when Satan throws these little things, you got to muster up some praise out of the people. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, my God. We feel like God's doing us wrong. We feel like he's not fair to us. And all this stuff is like, and I, 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 I start crying. I said, God, we're not prepared to do much battle. That's a problem. And I begin to say, Lord, Teach me so I can teach others. When you start, let me tell you what Jesus said. He said, if any man going to come after me, before you decide I'm going to follow Jesus, you need to stop and count the cost. Isn't that what he said? See, some people get in the blindfold, it says, you know. And when they get in, they say, oh, Lord, I didn't know it was going to be all this, man. I, you know, I just... I want out of here, you know, but, but when, you, when you sit down and say, now, wait a minute now, do I really, am I really ready to follow God? It ain't, it's, no, it's no piece of cake. And listen, and the preachers that make it feel like it's a piece of cake, they're lying to you. Because the Bible tells me differently. The Bible says, all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? Suffer persecution. Listen to what he said. Somebody say, people treat me wrong. Guess what he said? He said, love your enemies. Do good to them that hurt you. Pray for them that do you wrong. Are y'all, uh, uh, is that in your Bible too? I said, God, we haven't been prepared like we need to be prepared. That's why we can't praise him in the midst of our struggles. 
Hallelujah. But how many is willing to say, God, I'm willing. I'm willing to learn what you want me to learn because I'm a true soldier of God. Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I used to say this when the going gets tough. Then the tough get going. You don't know what you got in you until you are confronted. Or you know what I'm saying? With the enemy. Hallelujah. But brothers and sisters, there's something dynamo in you. you. You got to hear me today. There's something great. Someone miraculous. And somebody that can never lose a battle. He lives within you. Hallelujah. And he wants an opportunity when you face things to show himself strong on somebody's behalf. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll never know what God is like and capable of doing for me personally if I never face anything. If everything that I face, I can handle it. I don't need him. Isn't that right? If I can face everything and handle it myself, if I can whoosh it away, I don't need him. But Jesus came that I might live. Hallelujah. And he's got something for us, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm getting excited. I'll try to slow it down here because, you know, you get excited when God began to show me this. I said, oh, I see the problem. So we're not mentally prepared. That's the problem. That's why we're frustrated. That's why we're dragging at times. That's why we're sad. You know, and, and that has its place, but, but I'm trying to make a point here today. The point that I'm trying to make is that when a soldier is prepared, he'll fight. When a soldier is prepared, he's going to fight. Ah, when a soldier is prepared, He's going to fight. Look at the neighbor and say, it's yours anyhow. Hallelujah. All right, now, so let's get these scriptures here. Uh, let's go with Ephesians 4. No, I'm, yeah, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. First he says, read the verse before and the verse after. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, right? So, see, this, now, I mean, this, is what, this is what Paul said now. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay. Give me um, 1 Peter 4, verses 1 and 2. So he says, inasmuch as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, he said, do what now? Arm yourself, what, with what now? With the same mind. Somebody say mind. I I, I want you to get this now because he said, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. He said, inasmuch as Christ has suffered in the flesh. All right, let's pause here. Let me tell you about Christ a little bit. Let Let me take it back. Everywhere he went, they persecuted him. The religious leaders stood in his way everywhere he went. Look, that hadn't happened to me. I don't know what may happen if it happened to me, but I'm just trying to show this is what he did. And all he did was the Father's will, healing and setting people free. And they fought him tooth and nail every step of the way. They couldn't even appreciate the miracle power of God. Uh, he, he, fa- he faced this. They... they Envied him so much until they killed him. And then he, on the cross, dying, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ, he said, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, meditate on that. 
if Jesus had kept that mind, I'm God. When it came to suffering, he wouldn't suffer. If he had said, oh, I'm God, you can't treat me this way. I'll wipe you out. <laughs> he could have, right? If he, had, if he had had that mind when people opposed him, he could not perform the Father's will. I hope you're getting this, right? So what I'm saying is this. He didn't think equality with God something to gra be grasped. He didn't see that as a goal. That wasn't his goal. But rather he took upon him the form of a bond slave or servant and became of no reputation. I got to get down here for a minute here. I'm coming back, Mike. Guns. He became nobody, a man with no title. I said to the church in Suffolk, when you put a title on me, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy when you put a title on me. You call me pastor. You call me apostle. You call me elders. Then all of a sudden, I start to act a little funny. But the Bible says he took upon himself the form of a slave or servant. He became a person with no reputation. It wasn't important for him, for people to know him. So when he did his miracles, he said, don't, 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 don't mention it. Just go, don't, don't tell nobody. Now, 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 sometimes if we work a miracle, we're just hoping that somebody shout it out real loud. You know what I mean? I, I, I understand why he did it, I, I'm, but I'm just making a point. I understand that he had a work to be done, and he had to, he had a certain amount of time that he was going to carry it out. And for people, he was not trying to reveal himself before the time. But it still proves the point, right? That he had something very great in him, right? Uh, uh, there was a man, I t the story is told about a man that uh, he, he did some good deeds at the shipyard when he was working there. And uh, he had a habit of just kind of trying to keep uh, vandals or whatever from bothering Breaking in the cars, and so sometimes he would check. Sometimes people's light would be off, be on, left on. When, they, and he knew that by the time they come back, uh, the batteries would be dead. So he would, and most of the time during that time, they would leave the cars unlocked. So he would open up the car door and just cut the lights off. So he did it for several cars uh, uh, one day, and uh, just looked like several. It must have been foggy that morning, and uh, some, several people left the lights on. So he just one by one went in, put the lights off. And he was sharing about um, after he did, he was just itching for somebody to know the good deed that he did. <laughs> he was trying to be humble, you know, wouldn't tell anybody, but he was, he was just hoping that somebody had noticed it and began to tell him. Now, that's the natural part of us, right? That's not the spiritual part. <laughs> It's okay. We, we, he, he's, he's bringing us, but I'm making a point. So, uh, but Jesus, the way he functioned was totally different. How could he do that? He knew who he was, right? He knew who he was, so he didn't have nothing to prove, right? All right, I ain't got no witness here. When he didn't have anything to prove, he didn't have to do all that stuff. In other words, when we don't have anything to prove, we know who we are. Hallelujah, we flow with God. Now, okay, give me another scripture. I'm about to finish here. Um, so he says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. I hope you're following me here because this thing really spoke to me. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ. All right. Give me another one. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10. Verse 4 and 5. Somebody has that. Who has that? Perkins. Okay, Joy. Mm. 
All right, now this, this, is, this is pretty awesome for you. This is something we need to meditate on. Bringing into captivity every thought. Binding up so it won't function to hinder us. Bringing into captivity. But before he said, he says, he said, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down of strongholds. Now, then he said, you know what the strongholds are, right? Fortified places. But in, in actuality, they're forts. But they're forts of Satan. All right? What is some of the strongholds? Unforgiveness is one of them. Anger. I mean, un- undealt with anger. That's what I mean here. Because I mean, all anger is not sin as long as a person don't sin. But there are strongholds. Fear can be a stronghold. So these are strongholds. He said, um, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds. And casting down reasoning or arrogant, or, uh, casting imagine, down imagination, which means reasoning or arrogant reasoning, reasoning that stands up against the Lord. Word. The Lord may say, do this, and a person may reason in a prideful manner against what God said. But the weapons can pull those down too, right? How many times have a person had a, a negative in their mind, to, and, and, and all of a sudden they, they meet that presence of God? And when they meet that presence of God, all of a sudden they feel themselves breaking. And say, Lord, and they begin to cry and they begin to say, I'm sorry, Lord. What happened is the Spirit of God began to pull down that reasoning that stood in the way. God has what we need, and he can pull it down. So it's not hopeless things. I'm just breaking, making a point about, about the mind, the mind that thought life. So he says... Uh, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So our, our, our thinking, our mind is extremely important in this whole process. That's what I'm pointing out. And then the other scripture here that I had in Acts chapter 20. Somebody read that in verse 19. So Paul... In talking about his life how it, to, to, the, to the elders of Ephesus, when he's getting ready to leave, and he said, y'all know my life. You know how I lived among you. He said, I was serving the Lord with all humility of mind. That's what it takes, brothers and sisters. It takes that. Okay, thank you. Now, the other one, before anybody begins to say, Lord, this is just, I mean, you know, we just can't really do it. Paul said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things, not something, right? Through Christ, which strengthens me. That's why God is in us, right? He's in us to make a difference. That's why when the fruit is born, people give glory to God, right? Because we can't do it, right? Since we can't do it, but when God produced the fruit in us, he gets the glory for it. Hallelujah. How many times you said to a person, uh, God, I'm not going to forgive him. And all of a sudden, when God comes by his spirit and break that power of unforgiveness and the person releases that person because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The goal is fruit bearing. Fruit bearing. Fruit bearing. That's what God is doing in our lives. And I, I, God made it so clear to me. He was saying how um, he said, I'm bringing forth the fruit of patience. I'm working patience in people's lives. Patience and, and endurance. You know, what do you mean by patience and endurance? What do you, well, why do I need patience? Why do I need endurance? Well, you can be in a situation where you just says, I'm not taking it anymore. Just point blank. I don't care for nobody. I'm just not going to take it. Look at somebody say, then that means that's you, right? But when God, if he's going to work patience in our lives, sometimes we take things that we would normally not take, right? And God is bearing some long suffering in our lives, right? See, I, I want you to really grasp what I'm trying to say because I really believe this is what God was making clear to me. He said, I'm, I want fruit out of my people's life. I want fruit. It's not so much that God doesn't care what we're going through. It's just that uh, he knows what it takes as we yield to him to bear fruit. 
And fruit is important to God. When fruit is born by the Spirit, God will move and deliver us out of any situation. But he wants the fruit, right? Let me give you an example here now. I'm, 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 I'm almost done here. When I was um, the first couple of years in pastorate, I had a certain attitude that pastors shouldn't go through certain things. And um, somehow, I don't know how I got it, maybe from the previous ministry, I gathered what was not accurate. I don't know how it happened. But anyway, I had it. So I was going through financial, and then my phone got cut off. And then another time, my lights got cut out. So by then, I was pretty upset with the Lord. I said, God, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. You called me the pastor. So how is this going to look? The pastor's lights are cut off. I mean, how is this going to look to people, you know? See, I'm, I'm, I'm fussing with God like God did it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, the Lord, in his patience, began to work with me like he'll work with you. He knows. He's not intimidated when we get frustrated, right? I, I heard one person say he's well-adjusted. So you can't move him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If a person not well as Jesse, you can move him. Leave me alone. You know, but you can't do that with God. God knows. So him being so well adjusted, he let me throw my tantrum. He let me say my piece. Then I had to come right back if I said too much and repent, right, out of my frustration. How many has ever done that? Said too much because you were angry, you know. But don't worry. He's going to get you there. He's going to get us there. Because he knows what it takes. But what I'm discovering more and more is this. If I allow the Spirit of God to work the fruits of righteousness in me, then God, there's no good thing will he withhold. For my life. And not only that, but I will be serving the divine purpose why I'm here on planet Earth. And that pleases God. The Father is glorified when I bear much fruit. I heard him say, You have heard of the patience of Job, right? That the Lord is long suffering and he's plenty in mercy. So God delivers us out, brothers and sisters. He delivers us out. And he's going to deliver each one of us out as we trust him, right? That's a given. So don't, don't sweat that no more. That's a given. But let's focus in on, am I acting with patience in the midst of this trial? Or am I throwing a fuss at God? If I'm throwing tantrums at God, then that means I got to grow, right? I, I had this to happen here, and then I'm gonna, uh, um, before I tell this, I'm going to conclude with this. This may help. And what the Lord is reminding me, he says, before a person has been healed from fear, they may have fearful thoughts. Before a person is delivered from guilt and condemnation, they may have guilt feelings and overly sensitive conscience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All these things take place within the uh, lives of God's people, but it's not God's fault. So, and, 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 and so he did say that. And then he said some would even say with a, a character that's not pleasing to God, they may say, that's just the way I am. And then the Lord has this to say. He says, no, that's just the way you were shaped, but that's not the way you are. In other words, so, so now, okay, I'm bringing this to a conclusion now. But I was talking about, uh, um, anyway, it'll come back to me. If it doesn't, I won't worry about it. But the Lord is out to bear fruit. Now, please take this home with you. What is important between you and God and me and God is that he is able to get fruit out of my life. Then, whether it's love, whether it's joy, whether it's peace, whether it's long-suffering, whether it's patience, whatever the fruit I may lack, James said, let patience 
have her perfect work, that you may be complete, perfect and entire, like in nothing. That means, and this is costly to all of us, I know, but remember, I, 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 I was talking to the Lord. I said, God, the, the body is suffering. The church is suffering. And it was almost like he was saying, I'm working fruit in the lives of my people. I'm working a deeper purpose in the lives of my people. Because when people see our lives and they see that we're not moved by circumstances, that we're determined to be faithful to God, we're bearing the light. And people see light. And they're drawn to God. And when they're drawn to God, they want to know about the God that you're serving. They want to know, how can you have peace in the midst of what you're going through? How can you treat this person good when they're treating you that way? How can you do that? They get a chance to see a grace that is not your own. Are you following what I'm saying? It's fruit that God wants. God's not angry with any of us. He loves us too much, but he wants the fruit, and the fruit trees bear fruit. I remember having uh, on the farm where we had pecan trees, we had pear trees, we had three types of apple trees. We had pear trees, all these beautiful trees, and some of the trees would bear just hanging fruits. We were so excited. I couldn't imagine how the farmer himself was because he, that tree was bearing that kind of fruit. And the Lord is very pleased when we bring much fruit. And sometimes when we start to bear fruit, he may prune us and purge us so that we can bring forth more fruit. But it doesn't mean that he's disagreeing with us. He's not approving of us. It just means that God is at work in our lives because God has a greater purpose for us. The end of a thing is better to consider than the beginning. It's not how you start out, but it's how you finish out. God made that so clear to me. He says, not how you start out. But will you go out in honor or will you go out in